Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, this isn't Kyle. I got somebody else. It's Brian. Hey. Um, last time we saw him, or you guys heard him then. Heard me last time. It was yeah. uh, Devil's Rejects. Yeah, a long time ago. A while, a while ago. Yeah. I, it's surprising we're already on, wow, episode 20 maybe? Right. Um, You've blown up since then. Yeah. I mean, look at things you are go Things are going good. Yeah, this yeah. is amazing. Um, today we're talking about Blade, 1998. Yes. Pretty jacked about it. Awesome movie. Um, love it. Uh, let's get right into it. Um, w 1998, you remember your first impression, seeing it for the first time? I remember, I, I've seen it, it put me in junior in high school, and <laughs> I, I remember thinking it was awesome. I mean, it was, I'm, I'm a big vampire guy, big zombie guy, and uh, pretty gory movie, Wesley Snipes is awesome. Oh, for sure. Chris Christopherson, awesome. Um, Steven Dorff, awesome. We'll talk about Amazing. all that later, but yeah, I, I was into it right away, and, and uh, I was a fan of the whole series, so. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, um, 1998, I was pretty young. I was not a junior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, um, sorry. No, I, uh, I remember seeing it on, like, DVD, uh, after it came out and all that, um, because my dad's a horrible person, he let me watch all that kind of stuff. As you guys have all heard throughout all these episodes, I watched some pretty gnarly stuff when I was a kid. <laughs> and, uh, so I remember seeing Blade when I was really young, stuff that my mom wouldn't let me watch, and I loved it. I love seeing people explode and get cut in half, and... <laughs> And Absolutely. when they're vampires, they don't have feelings, right? So it no. don't matter. Um, and it's, it, especially right now, with like everything with Black Panther and all that, with you know black heroes, it's like, this has been going on forever. Yeah, this movie is 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, holy shit. Yeah. 20 years old? Yeah. Oh my god, that makes me feel old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, yeah, but it's like, this stuff's been around, but you know, comic book movies weren't what they were in 98. That they are now. In fact, I didn't even know at the time. I mean, I've known since then, but I didn't know that it was a was based on a comic book, loosely yeah, based right, on one. Right. I didn't know back then. And it just wasn't uh, wasn't pop there. Yeah, like I remember at the beginning, you'd see Marvel, and then it'd say like dark comics or something, right. and you're like, what? Yeah, really? I I don't know. I wasn't. I never read any of the Blade comics or anything. Like I that. didn't either. Never have. So it makes me want to. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's someday, eventually. Um, <laughs> so um. Let's do uh, favorite scenes. Okay. You have, like your favorite scene. My favorite. Fa my favorite scene is right right in the opening scene. Um, there's a there's a girl that's bringing this guy to a party and he's all excited uh, about it. Not they, just any girl. No, the girl turns out to be the one and only Tracy <laughs> Lord, which is blo mind blowing to me. We could get into that the, right. uh, from the adult film realm. <laughs> um, anyway, Tracy Lords, yeah, which blew my mind. I just that's hilarious. Yeah, I did yeah. not know that until recently. But anyway, they they come into this kind of a rave and. Everybody's dancing to some you know really fast-paced music, and uh, next thing you know, the the sprinklers come on, and it's all blood, and and everybody's having a good time except for old boy that came in with Tracy Lords who has no idea what's going on. And, it's a surprise. Um, eventually ends up on the ground as he's trying, you know, the vampires are trying to rip him apart, and he's crawling and comes upon a um, a figure standing oh, there, which yeah. turns out to be Mister Mister Blade himself. So. Yeah, yeah, that's all. And I like how his boots and his pants and all that stuff, like, no blood whatsoever. None. It's just all nice, pressed, black, matte. None. Love it. Almost Batman-esque. Right? right? With, the, with, the, with the vest. Yeah, I love that vest. Mm -hmm. I love, like, he gets shot in it later, and, like, the bullets stay in there throughout the... Oh, that's some badass stuff. <laughs> um, so, I do this a lot with Kyle. Like, we'll have a lot of the favorite scenes. So, I try not to copy. But I'm going to copy. Oh, you copy. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was thinking about it, but I have to, because that is, it opens up, and you have no idea what's going on. Nothing. And especially if you didn't know what Blade was. If you just thought a black dude with a sword, and then it's vampires, and he, he just slaughters them, and I love, even in 98, the effects, when they kind of like burn up and stuff. It's pretty awesome. It's good stuff. It's amazing. Pretty and awesome. Then, uh, yeah, like the sprinklers of blood and the, the music's great. I really like the music. And, um, yeah, that the whole scene. I love that. And then the the aftermath of it, mm -hmm. when all the cops show up and Donald Logue. I love Donald Logue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. He's nailed to the wall mm -hmm. and burnt and shit. He's probably my fav one of my favorite characters in this movie just because he's kind of just this, he's, he's kind of Stephen Dorff's right-hand man, if you will, but he's a little on the crazy side. He right. just keeps getting picked on by Blade, if you will. Yeah. Um, but he's just, like, glutton for punishment. He just keeps coming back for more. So, anyway. Donald Logue is, like, my favorite character in anything. Yeah, really. yeah. Like, anything yeah. Donald Logue's in, I love Donald Logue. Right on. Um, what what did uh, just came out? Um, 
Cloverfield Paradox. Yes. Have you watched that yet? Yes. Donald Logue. He is in that. Yeah. Duh. There's a, you know, it's really brief and he's like on a little computer screen. Yeah. But when I was sitting there watching, I was like, oh my God. I was like, Donald Logue's in this. And I was like telling everybody, I, I love Donald Logue. Cloverfield Paradox. Awesome movie. He's great. I would love to do that one sometime. Yeah. We're, we're, we're definitely doing it. I love that. So we'll have to have you. Maybe, you know, for once we'll get all three of us. And, right on. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we talked about our first impressions and our favorite scenes and all that. What, like, in 98 for a comic book movie, what kind of, like, set this apart? Because now, today, you know, Wesley Snipes is Blade. He is. Right? So, yeah. what, like, what is it about Blade that, like, stands out? It's the first, it's the first darker type of movie like that that I can remember. I mean, it's rated R. There's, oh, there's quite yeah. a bit of profanity. Um, um, oh, there, yeah. And like you said, the goriness of it was just kind of something that set it apart from your traditional... I mean, the Batman movies at that time were very PG, very, very... Maybe traced back more to the old Batman, you know, with the... It was more more for kids, or you didn't right. see that sort of thing. And when Blade comes out, and he's all rough, and, and they cuss, and Chris <laughs> Christopherson, he's all, you know, everything's just... The definition of a man. Yeah, it's just, everything's yeah. just a little darker, a little slimier, you know, a little gorier, and I dig that, so... It's, well, that's funny, Batman, like, Batman and Robin was 97, like, yeah. the year before. Yeah, and so that like, movie just reminds me of a, a, a Disney movie. I'm right? Watching, I don't know. It's like Disney on Ice. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm fun. Good one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's weird. Like a year later, like people noticed, and they're like, "Okay, people don't want this hour and a half long toy commercial." Right. right? Let's make some badass motherfuckers who say "motherfucker" a lot. All right, and I and dig that. Kill bitches. I'm sorry. I still to this day at 36, I like I like a lot of profanity in a movie like that. It just gets me all jacked up. It's, right. It's, it's true. It just like, makes you happy. Yeah. Especially, um, I guess I could change. It's not really a scene, but like. One of my favorite things that sticks out is I have this on when Facebook quotes were a big thing, mm -hmm. you know, and I had this on my quote page like in 2008. And it's some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I love that. Yep. It's like, um, you can put that in anywhere in your life. Yeah. And it's like, am I trying to ice skate uphill? Maybe I should take a step back. Right. I don't know. I Everything, like, he'll drop all those motherfuckers, but then, like, in that same scene, and he turns around, and uh, Stephen Dorff is cut in half, and he's swirling blood, mm -hmm. and he turns around, and he's like, <laughs> like, he doesn't even say, what the fuck, he just howls yeah. it, but, um, I don't know, that's still great. It's awesome. I love awesome. that. Um, so, like, the gore and all that stuff, <laughs> Chris Christopherson, mm -hmm. I like... We uh, we actually did like our first my first episode ever. Yeah, with me. And, uh, yeah, and we didn't put it out because it was pretty bad. <laughs> we um, we talked about Millennium though. It was 1989. Chris oh Christopher man! <laughs> and so this is really our second time talking about him. But, yeah. Um, that episode will probably never see the light of day. Probably not. We were a little nervous, you know, but very nervous. It was it was a very awkward. It was it didn't even feel like a conversation. No. no. Um, we were just like, um, so. Chris was laying in the bed, and he got up, and there was only one pillow. I didn't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> yeah. We've come a long way, but yeah. I think what he's trying to say is Chris Robertson is awesome. Yeah, he's like the definition of a man. Yeah, he is. And he's great in this movie. It's Whistler. Um, you can tell there's a real connection with him and Blade, almost like a father figure, that yeah, they don't, exactly. neither of them are too, they're, they're too manly to, to admit it as much, but um, he does a lot for him as, as, as Blade's caretaker, um, injector, Serum injector, <laughs> Serum injector, hand holder, if you will, <laughs> yeah. um, and helper and gun maker. It is. Cr I mean, um, what's her name? Karen. Yes, uh, Jensen. She kind of touches in on it, like he's sort of a father figure. A little bit. And, like there's that little bit, that little tiny piece that where it, like actually tells you. Yes. But they do such a good job with that bond. I agree. Um, just showing it, you know, like holding his hand mm -hmm. when he's like dudes don't hold hands no they don't not dudes like these right. dudes no right. way uh -uh. but you know when he's injecting him with the serum and he's gripping his arm mm -hmm. it's like wow that's like it just captures you, you like, can feel deep. you can feel the connection yeah, yeah I definitely do. yeah definitely. absolutely um yeah karen jensen the hematologist that's yeah very how, very uh, how ironic is that what, a, right? what are the odds yeah oh good maybe you can help
Anyway. What's uh, what's her like boyfriend's name? Oh God, um, because mm. he's hilarious. I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> I, he's hilarious. So I love when he's like in the pit <laughs> and they throw her in the pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, to meet an old friend. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the I mean, we could jump around a lot. Yeah. So let's kind of start from the beginning. So like we talked about um, that club scene and mm-hmm. all the blood and all that stuff. Um, so like just a little bit after. Let's talk about, there's so much to talk about, I don't know where to start. Okay, I'm going to jump around, I just said I wasn't going to. Jump around. Jump around. around. House of Pain. Mm-hmm. Um, Frost. Mm-hmm. Steven Dorff. Yes. Why is he so awesome? He's like, just... He's great, because, um, like, I remember, he's in Immortals, and um, he has a small part in that, but he's like, he's like that guy that you're always like, oh, hey, there's him. Yeah, and, and he's perfect. He's the perfect, uh, uh, not purebred vampire for this movie. The down to the hair, the look, uh, uh, the icy glazed eyes, uh, the, everything. Uh, he's just, and he's he's a pretty attractive guy for my wife. So I um, think he is. But he plays Deacon Frost, who ends up being this uh, this vampire that was not born a vampire, which which makes the rest of the purebred bred vampires, you know. Unhappy. I thought that was really interesting, kind yeah. of the hierarchy of vampires, mm-hmm. and they had that whole meeting, and it's like, it's like the Batman '89 meeting with all the yeah, yeah. gangsters, and he's like the Joker, and he's like, I'm I'm gonna start running this shit. And it makes me wonder how he even got to be part of that circle anyway, if he yeah. wasn't a purebred vampire, right? But, um, that's neither here nor there. He obviously struck fear in all of them. Um, when you tell that first meeting with the group, when he kind of says he's going to do his own thing, and um, he had some people swallowing a little hard in there in that <laughs> meeting, so <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, the the head vampires. Uh, you do. You do. You do. You do. You do. Cure. Um. The only <laughs> the only reason I knew who that guy was was because of Ace Ventura. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I feel kind of shitty about that because he's like a good actor. No, he's, he's all right. He's yeah. got a lot of good stuff, but I know him from these stupid fucking movies. <laughs> yeah. um, we just talked about Armageddon last week. He's the psychologist in Armageddon. Indeed, he is. Yeah, so, yeah. He's like he always pops up everywhere. He always tells you he's got those eyes and that voice. Mm-hmm. I can't do it, but no, I can't do it. Either. But, don't even have me try. Okay. No, I gotta do it. All, all right. right. Um, and for the longest time, what really creeped me out. This is way off the road but um the twins mm-hmm. i always thought that they were guys when i was a kid really yeah huh i don't know why yeah no yeah and then i you know like when i was i always say it, i was like 14 when i started buying all these movies i was a teenager and i started buying all these um and then it, i started watching again and i watched it again in high school i'm like those are fucking chicks mm-hmm. i had no, i don't know why i always thought that <laughs> i don't know what was going on i don't know either uh, but that yeah. is yeah that really creeped me out i don't know why <laughs> i bet yeah huh. um we obviously really like wesley snipes mm-hmm. and um there is a tweet that he tweeted out and i just showed you um i pulled it up real quick he, um, somebody asked him, like, who he would pick for, like, a, uh, a new Blade, because Marvel's talking about, you know, with the, the Punisher and Daredevil and all that dark stuff. Rebooting all this stuff, all yeah. All that stuff doing, that's doing so well. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone tweeted him, and he says, uh, when anybody asks who could be the next Blade, he says, you already know who there's only one Blade fam, and it's a, you know, picture of him. I love it, I and love he's it. So, and he's 55? Classic Wesley Snipes. Is that 55? Wow. He don't look fifty five. No, I just watched him on the on the Tonight Show just maybe a couple months ago, and he was just cracking jokes, and he looks he looks ready to go. And you, you know, you forget that Wesley Snipes what he had to go to prison for what, yeah. tax evasion yeah. or whatever yeah. for a couple of years. So, I um, mean, kind of went away. Uh, I would love to see him back I, in that role. It'd yeah, be awesome. I think the because he went away, and I think the first thing that he was back in was like. Exp- Bendables 3 mm-hmm. was like his first thing back. Yeah. He was supposed to be in the first one and I like couldn't leave the country or something. And There's some weird shit going on with him. I don't know. He's he's, he's a savage. What's your, sure. what's your like, aside from Blade, what's like your favorite Wesley Snipes movie? Demolition Man, for sure. Holy shit, that was fast. He, he, yeah, he plays, I'm sorry. He plays <laughs> oh my God. I, just, I love that movie from the beginning to end. He plays the best villain ever. He's colorful. He's, he's just, he's That's full racist. of quips. 
No, yeah, colorful in a different way, yeah. With the orange hair yeah. and the... Oh my god, I love that movie. You get me started. That was yeah. fast. <laughs> 1B would be Major League. Me and the baseball nut that I am, yeah, William Ace Hayes. Yeah. Um, Omar Epps plays him in Major League 2, which is stupid. Uh, but anyway, neither here nor there. Those yeah. are my two favorites. The very, That's very cool. millisecond reaction. Yeah. Demolition Man. Demolition Man. <laughs> it's like, I didn't ask him that before we started. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was a on the drop of the hat thing. Yeah, that I was, love that movie. Anyway. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would... I, I'd have to go with White Men Can't Jump. Okay, that's sure. a great movie. Great movie. I love that movie. Money Train? Yes. Him and Woody yeah. are a great pair uh, together. It's so cool. I would agree. Um, I didn't realize how long that I didn't realize how long this movie was. Yeah, this, this is a solid two hours. Movie. Yeah. Holy cow. And it's got some depth to it. I mean, it's got a storyline. It's got the storyline of the of the Karen Jensen, who's just realizing about the vampires, and she's slowly turning into one herself, and Blade, who's out for vengeance, uh, who thinks his mom died giving birth to him, and... And has all these vampire, all the best parts of the vampire uh, abilities, but yet you know, he can also do things like walk in the sunlight, and he's just he's not as, as susceptible to the garlic and stuff. And this movie follows basically the the general rules of thumb when it comes to vampires. Oh yeah, um, the garlic, silver, stake through the heart, sunlight, sunlight, basically. All their weapons are based around those. They those don't four ingredients. shine like diamonds and shit. UV rays, another one. But yeah, right. No shining like diamonds. Yeah. Thank goodness. That's so stupid. I hate that. I hate that. Now you get me started um, on Twilight. But that reminds me when you're talking about like how he was born, half, and you think his mother's dead and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, they did a really good origin story without like drawing you into a whole. Yeah. Excuse me. Without doing like a whole origin story, like they just do the little flashbacks, and you kind of. I mean, it's enough to get. Gave you all the content yeah, without like, a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Right. It's yeah. like we didn't have to see him grow up as a little kid, and then we didn't have to see him do all this other shit. Yep. And at the end, when 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 he's at Frost's place, and the 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 little the the, the new age coffin lifts up, oh, and there's his yeah. mom right there, and you know exactly who she is. It's Sonal right. Latham. You can tell from the beginning. Oh, that's his mom. You know right away, without it telling you. And oh, she she didn't die. She had already been turned. Um, but she's not on Blade's side at all. She's on Frost's side. He, she'd been manipulated, and they need his blood. Right. So Yeah, and you get all of this. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of exposition and backstory that you get, but they don't have to draw it on for th 20, 30 minutes. Agreed. It's, uh, I don't know, it's really good. Yeah. And the, the flashbacks are really cool, too. Yep. Like, seeing him come out, and he's, like, disgusting, mm -hmm. like most newborn babies. Yeah, it's kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then... I knew his name was Eric, mm -hmm. and then, like, going through and I was, like, reading trivia and stuff, I never realized that his last name was Brooks, Yeah, but it's on his mom's driver's license. Oh, if so you look that's back. how you could have seen Okay, because it Eric drops Brooks. out there in the first minute of the movie. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I didn't even notice that. See, all that backstory and exposition is, like, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yeah, I don't know. That's right pretty on. amazing how they, they have so much story. Yeah. And then even, uh... Whistler talks when he's telling uh, Karen about all this stuff. He's like, I found him when he was a teenager. Um, I almost killed him. Mm -hmm. I thought he was a vampire. Because he was out feeding on the homeless. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Like, I don't need to see that. Like, my imagination fills in the blanks enough. Absolutely. And so, I don't know. That's just cool. Like, yeah. I, like I don't know. I kind of want to see it. But yeah. at the same time, like, I don't need to. Yeah, for sure. Pick it up what you're putting down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... There's a lot of like electronic music and stuff in this. Yeah, it's it, the it's a very hip hip hop techno y kind of vibe for the soundtrack. Yeah, that's it. But it it makes me want to download it. On, I talk about this every episode because I, I have Spotify. I can download all these albums, mm -hmm. and so like um, Black Mask, a couple episodes back, I downloaded the whole album, all that other stuff. So. I'm rewatching this now. I want to download it. Yeah, it's because it like gets you jacked up. No, it's a groovy soundtrack. And I, it, I, agree. I don't know. It makes you want to like stab people and shit. But, <laughs> I mean, not that I would, but like that's him. Not like when you're working out and stuff, like you want to like it makes you. Yeah, I could be Wesley Snipes. You yeah, know, I'm I feel like that every day anyway. But yeah. <laughs> I just wake up and I'm like I'm I'm Wesley. I'm feeling it today. I don't know about the stabbing people though. Listen, that those opinions expressed are not of both of us. Just as him. Anyway, I would totally stab people. <laughs> right on. Well, under the right circumstances, yeah. yeah. If, I was, if I was a vampire hunter, I'm stabbing, stabbing the shit out of people. Um, <laughs> there was um, like right when I first saw this, um, I you know I just thought it was cool that he had a silver sword, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But then my dad ruined it because he said like silver is really weak. Oh, and so see, he's like poking holes in the. But, in but the... then he said like it had to be like maybe it's like silver plated. 
Like, it's a sword with, like, a layer of silver. What if it's a Hattori Hanzo sword? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Anyway, the is in this. I'm not trying to get. I'm not trying to pick through the the awesomeness of this. I don't know. The right. sword. The sword's pretty sweet. He's got a lot of cool. He's weapons, got a lot though. of cool shit. Yeah. Um, like in the when Donald Logue's on the staked on the wall, mm -hmm. and he, all they all run, and he has like a boomerang thing. Oh yeah, and he gets them all in the head. Yeah. yeah. Almost kind of like used in the movie Wanted too. At the end of Wanted, right? Yeah. 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 Runs the border on kind of same thing. Anyway, cool. Yeah. What's your favorite blade weapon? Ooh, ooh, that's really good. I like I like the sword because right. I, I like I like the. I defense. mean, it's called blade. I like the defense <laughs> mechanism on it. The guy towards the end, he he grabs it and then it. <laughs> What's you know, he say? The, oh God, I don't remember. I've got his pig sticker. <laughs> yeah, he says it like an idiot. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. <laughs> I've got his pig yeah. sticker. Yeah, and then and it, he it, does it, it like that. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who does that? No, that guy. Yeah. Anyway, Dumbass. that's my favorite weapon. Um. But there's there's a lot. He's got some nice. He's got some nice guns. Um, <laughs> that's nice. My favorite line in the movie on on your completely different topic is it's open season on all suckheads. <laughs> I oh I love that scene though. Yeah. Where he's uh, that's the cop scene, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He like um, he's beating the shit out of him at the apartment, mm -hmm. and then he follows him, and he goes into that restaurant, and he's still beating the shell, and he's like, where's it at? It's the blood bank. It's in the fridge! Yeah, it's in the fridge. He, he's, he's holding him, he looks back, smack! <laughs> <laughs> he just hits him again. He's like, I'm telling you, it's in the freezer! That's, I don't know, that's hilarious. Those I like those pauses, um, and that look, I want somebody to make a meme out of that, where mm -hmm. he's like looking around, like, are you fucking with me? Right. <laughs> that, that Wesley Snipes look is amazing. Yes. That's one of my favorite. I, I don't know. That's not my favorite scene, but holy shit, that's close. It's right up there. Tell Frog. That, yeah. That just, it's open season on those suckheads. He's got a lot of good one-liners. Yeah. This movie's got quite a bit of them. The Wizard's yeah. got a couple of them, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's, there's, if, if you're a fan of one-liners, this movie has got chock full of them. <laughs> no, <laughs> chock full. No shit. That's the thing. One thing about all Wesley Snipes movies is he he generally will play uh, at least a partial villain, uh, but he's always got the quips. He always comes with yeah. the humor. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter what role he's in. That's one of the things I like so much about him. To quick with the. For sure. Yes. Okay, I got a question for you. Um, kind of referring to the tweet. Mm -hmm. We both love Wesley Snipes. So we would want him for the role. Oh, obviously, yeah, I'd love for him to come back. Yes. But here's a question. We'll come back to it towards the end. I'll let you think about it. Who would be your blade now? Like, if you had to pick, like, a newer actor or somebody. So I got a few minutes to think so, about it. So, yeah. So start thinking about that. Okay. And then, uh... Okay. We will keep... What do you think about, like, La, La Magra, or the... Oh, it's just called the Vampire Bible, well, right? You're right, With right. La Magra? Right. That all... There's a lot of story to this. Like... I don't know. What do you think of the Bible? It's is the Vampire cool? Bible. I, I didn't like the way they had it laid out when they go in the back. That's where the, that Jabba the Hutt thing's at. Oh, right. Jabba the Hutt thing. Pearl. Pearl. Yeah, the, it moved. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anyway, they open up this. Speaking of one-liners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they go in and here's, here's this, here's this, the Vampire Bible. It's telling its whole history and it's all just, you know, and very displayed very well all in these right. big glass. Um, but what, the premise of the story is that they need the blood of the 12... Vampires, um, they need plus the blood of the Daywalker combined together to, to bring on the Blood Lord, um, who will then basically turn the whole world into vampires. That's what that's what Deacon Frost is trying to get at, and then Lamagra is the tells the story of that prophecy, if you will. That was laid out really good. <laughs> I was I was thinking about trying to explain it, but links. That's really easy. Yeah, yeah. that's. Just, Said really well. <laughs> From here. But that, I mean, where the book are like all in those glass panels and mm -hmm. stuff, I love that fight scene. Yeah, but then that's the so total cool. disregard to the whole history right. of the vampires, they just like, come in firing. Fuck like, it. There's, there's no, yeah, oh my god, the history, no! Right. Yeah. Huh. But I, yeah. like, I like, though, like that little girl that he's chasing and stuff, mm -hmm. and then she like starts kicking him, and yeah. he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, he's like, I was trying to save you. <laughs> that little girl looked really familiar, too, but I didn't really dig into it enough to. No, she's probably in some others. I always play that game. Whoa, what, what actors right. are in this? I could, didn't remember. Well, there's uh, we listed like ten of them at the beginning. Yeah, but all of them are in something. Yep, they're all. Um, but like in that with the glass panels and all that stuff in the fight scene, and then he gets his arm dislocated. Yep, 
And, um, or, yeah, that was that, right? Where he's like, Ugh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they, I, I uh, mean, she dislocates her arm at the very beginning, it. and he, he yeah. fixes her. Right, right. And then later on, he dislocates his arm, and then she fixes it for him. Right. That's yeah, yeah. a little weird thing. But, yeah. yeah. But I, I like, like, um, that. that's a pig sticker scene, too, when they're in there. Like, all this <laughs> stuff happens in that one room. Mm -hmm. And he gets choked up against the wall, and he picks up the sword, and Donald Logue is fucking with him. And then... Fucking, you're like, oh no, what's Blade gonna do? And Whistler shows up. Here comes Whistler. Yeah. Well, yep. uh, yeah, the one liner too. With yeah, the bomb. God dang it. Yeah. He uses the bomb. Oh, it up. oh, right. Catch you fuckers at a bad time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, with the long flowing hair. Right. I just, oh God. That's it's great. Good stuff. There he is. Like, Whistler. We can just make this whole pot, like this whole episode just about one liners from Blade. Yeah, for we sure. We don't even have to talk about the movie. No. no we'll movie. just talk about one liners. Yeah. What's your other favorite one? Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, uh, and then, I mean, after you get done with all of that, and then the train, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Cool scene. And he like needs a serum. And she pops his arm back in and then the vampires are chasing after the train. And, and then he, you think Whistler's dead or something. You think he's dead, but yeah. then he says he, he, can, he can get along on his own. Yeah. Then he proceeds to take down a look to the side of his face and smash it against the train as it's riding by. Oh, right. Burr, yeah. Burr. yeah, it's pretty awesome. Poor Donald Logue. Yeah, he just gets just terrorized the whole movie. And they can't die, obviously. Okay, they? there's another one later that I like. Yeah. The first time he loses his arm and then he grows up back. And then he's like, he takes off the gloves. Yeah. how gross. He's like, think of her. Play piano again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I love that yep. shit. Yep. And then he loses it again, poor guy. Yeah. And then the, towards the end, there's their uh, Deacon Frost who tricks him into thinking oh, he's going to take yeah. his arm again and he's holding it up like, really? I already <laughs> lost it once. Hold, hold your arm up. Yeah, he's oh, like, oh, no, come I'm, on. Just, I'm just messing with you. Come on, man. It's like all better. So I guess stuff. vampires do have a sense of humor. <laughs> That's that pretty funny. At least Deacon Frost does. Yeah. And then at the end, Donald, we're staying on the Donald Lowe Lo thing. Um, at the very end, they, they get this, it's, it, what appears to be the final battle between Blade and him, since they've been going back and forth the whole time, it's kind of been one-sided, but anyway, um, he comes running at him, and Blade just chases the sword and just chops his head right <laughs> off, and it's <laughs> over in a split second. You think this is going to be like the mini fight before the main fight, and it's no fight at all. Uh, oh, what, was it the sword, or was it the... the it might have been the, might have been the string. And yeah, then he, the string. Yeah, he's wearing his sunglasses. Mm -hmm. and he, yeah, 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 he, he runs catches out, and he catches puts them, them on, and, puts and it's, them on. it's on. And then yeah. that music kicks yeah. on, and you're like... Oh, I want to stab some bitches. <laughs> See? Right. It makes you want to stab No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Stabbing. Yeah. Yeah. I love, but um, I was, like, I watched the, fr I've seen this movie a dozen times, and so, like, I started watching it, and I didn't realize it was two hours, so I mm -hmm. kind of lost track of time. And then I watched, like, the last five minutes so I could watch the end fight scene. And then you see, like, all these guys attacking him one-on-one, -on -one, and then you just, like, I love this movie, but there's dudes in the background that are just, like, like Mortal Kombat stance. Yeah, yeah. It's like fucking go. <laughs> the, end, the end sequence. In the, my wife even made a comment while we were watching it. That it sounded like Street Fighter esque the music almost. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the people start yeah. coming after him, and it's like wow, there's a lot of lot of Asian vampires, um, <laughs> right. especially in the last scene. But yeah. they need that for the for the for the fight sequences yeah. I get. Um, but yeah, very Street Fighter esque music towards the end there. I, I love it. I love it too. It's know. great. Great fight um, sequences. And that last fight scene was after he, like, I'm pretty sure he kicks that dude in the balls, like, six times, mm -hmm. right? After he, like, throws him down that pit, and mm -hmm. he jumps down there, and he's just like, smack, 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 right in the balls, right? Quite a few smacks. In the yeah. balls? And right in the balls. It is in the balls. I think so. I always thought it was in the balls, and no. I was like, there's no way. We said in the that. balls several times there, but yes, I in believe the it balls. is. Yeah, in the balls, yeah. In the balls. Yeah, he said it again. Right in the balls. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but there's a lot of pits and stuff too. Like mm -hmm. he throws that dude in the pit, and there's that weird pit with their boyfriend in there, and, and all that. Um, the effects. I don't know what like the end fight. Like uh, Stephen Dorff is supposed to be like this huge swirling mass of blood. Yeah, so, I saw that. I saw that it was alternate. Or what they, they? Yeah, they couldn't 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 do it. It's just the CG wasn't there. Huh. And so the route that they went, like where he retained his form and he did that blood <laughs> suction thing. I thought it was pretty funny how he became the the blood lord to begin with. He just waits for one drop of blood oh, to yeah. come through, <laughs> right? and it lands on his forehead. And he's just like he rubs it on himself, and he's like, oh. but just one side. 
And then yeah, and then how the how the how the the almost like the the flying the skeleton oh, the yeah, wings that come out, out of all the vampires and they just crawl out of their mouths. Oh my god! Out. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's kind of nowhere. No, it's out of nowhere. It's, it's kind of corny at the end, yeah. corny in, the, in the worst kind of way, in the, right. in the best kind of way. I mean, but I, I, I mean, I wonder if a lot of that because they had to change the third act basically. Yeah. So I wonder if a lot of that kind of came in last minute. Yeah, it could have. Um, because that was like you're watching this whole movie and it's very. I mean, it's vampires, but it's very, like, down-to-earth, very... Mm -hmm. It's, like, a very real-feel world. And then you get to the end, and then there's swirling bone it's dragons. It's really weird and... at the end, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's weird, but I still love it. Yeah, that's I love amazing. it. It's great. Um, what do you think... I, I mean, we might do the sequels sometime, mm -hmm. but what do you think of, like, 2 and 3? Blade 2, I was not a fan of. Not as much. I didn't like the whole hybrid thing. Um, and I just, I guess I just wasn't as connected to that movie as it was to the first one. Um, and then the fact that Whistler's alive after he was so, so very clearly oh, dead yeah. after in the first one, we don't... That was a good moment. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's so clearly dead and then next thing you know, he's alive just to be killed really very shortly after in the second one. Blade Trinity, I do like. I'm a Jessica Biel guy. I'm a Ryan Reynolds guy. Um, the, the combination of the three. And I... <laughs> I like the I like the Dracula version. Yeah, I like Dracula. Yeah. So we can um, we can talk about that sometime. He plays a pretty good. Uh, what's his name? Oh, Prison no, Break guy. Don't put me on the spot. Uh, yeah. Dominic Purcell. There you go. Yeah, I like that Trinity. I like as more a little bit more than two. Okay, I'm a, I'm a little the other way. I like two a little bit more than three. Like if we're not like one's out of the way. Right. Um, I like I like the the hybrid and I like the uh, I like Guillermo del Toro. I love him. Love so him. So great. That kind of I'm kind of pandering but um two is really cool i love the cast it's got ron perlman and donnie yen and yep. a bunch of hard hitters ron perlman i mean hellboy right Come on. and uh tony kieran mm -hmm. i love him um i don't know it's just two like kind of nails it for me mm -hmm. in every way three Fair and then three like i like but like with with the dracula like i like that backstory yeah i wish there was more of that and yeah. less like like vampire Pomeranians and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, the dogs and, that's right. But like, um, but like three though. I, I, everybody does good. Mm -hmm. Like I like Triple H does fine. And I mean, it's um, Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel mm -hmm. and ah, uh, who's the uh, the bad girl? Oh, don't do that to me. It's uh, it's right. something heard pretty. Switch to this Blade One, not Blade Three. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I know. You didn't, we didn't do our research. Yeah. Uh, she got like a boy name. Oh, jeez, don't... Peter don't. Parker. Parker Posey. Parker Posey. That's it. Parker Posey. She's yeah, yeah. great. She's awesome. I love that. I kind of want to watch 3 now again. Yeah. Because, I don't know. For sure, yeah. You don't Parker remember Posey. it, you know, quite well. Right, yeah. Yeah. But I remember, like, the, the, the backstory of Dracula and stuff. I think that stuff's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, but back to Blade 1. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> who's... Okay, here. Who is your favorite? Um, aside from like, uh, what's his name, Deacon Frost? Like, who's your other favorite? Like, bad vampire in that, or like, yeah, like your other favorite vampire? I like, I like the chick. I like Deacon's chick. Um, the one that the, the I really, thought, the one I thought yes, was a boy. Yes, one of the twins there. The very, the very, the very chic, um, short, blonde-haired. Um, oh, you know what? I think I know. Chick. What, you think I know what it was? Is uh. Final Fantasy Seven. They kind of look like Cloud. They kind of do look like Cloud. <laughs> so that, oh, maybe that's what it was. Where's Sephiroth and all this? Oh, right. we're not talking about Final Fantasy Seven. Oh, yeah. Barry. No, maybe maybe the girlfriend. Yeah. Um, okay. She's kind of mouthy. Well, then I mean, if we're counting all vampires, how about the how about the the pile of goo that they you know job of the hut? <laughs> oh, right. Pearl. 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 Yeah. Uh, and they don't they don't explain at all how that right that why got to be like that. Like yeah. why? How, what is wrong with it? They don't explain Maybe that it's at all. just like the world's fattest guy. No, it's just gross. I mean, it's like bit <laughs> it's really like more like Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs. Um, <laughs> he's like eating himself. Yeah, he dies himself. <laughs> he dies because he ate himself. And he went, yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> yeah. Except for the hilarious. pepperoni, there's no pepperoni on it. It's like, right. uh, but yeah. Um, I, I, I started, um, like, I like all the, like, we talked about, like, the vampire hierarchy, mm -hmm. and then, like, the vampire glyphs I thought was really cool. Like, yeah, they yes. The they marked all the 
familiars. Right. Humans, I like that too. That sounds cool. Humans that wanted to become vampires, but they had to be their more like their bitch boys for a little bit. Um, and so they mark them with the mark of whatever house of house of Deacon Frost. Like Blade knew right away that that insignia meant Deacon Frost when he found it on that yeah. cop. And that's kind of cool. And they had you, you saw those markings around town. Um, and I thought that was pretty neat too. I like how they bring that into two. Yeah. As well, because then they're like, he's like, I don't see any markings. He's like, well, since you've been around, we've had to change our shit. Right. And it's also <laughs> prevalent in the in the end scene. The blood runs through the they have all twelve of the the, the oh, symbols, yeah. and the the blood of the daywalker runs through all that. Um, right. It's coming down to drip on their heads before their little skull <laughs> things come up. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then uh, so like there's the the vampire glyphs, the vampire. Um, hierarchy. Va everything starts with vampire. Yeah. Which is kind of a lazy way of doing it. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's still hot. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, the, the well, uh, one other silly part that I want to talk about real quick, just to see what you think, is um, the really short chase sequence in the cars, mm -hmm. where it's just sped up. Oh God, we, <laughs> I, we actually we we I brought that up in real time as my wife and I were watching that this morning, and I said. I said, I wonder what was up with that scene. I wonder how come they had it sped up so far. Yeah. She told me she told me to go look it up on something online, and I never did. <laughs> oh, it'll explain to you fandom or something. It'll explain to you why they uh, cinematically they thought they needed to do that. But it's definitely something that you that you see. Yeah. That just makes you giggle. Like, why are they just sped up? It's like one and a half times speed. It's, <laughs> they just sped up the reel and like. And it has the sound effect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, I don't understand it. it. That's great that you brought that up. That's, I'm glad you did. That's hilarious. It's, yeah, I'm sure it is somewhere like production costs or something. Yeah. Like it's probably something really we magical. Get 12 like seconds that. out of the movies where they would speed it up real fast. And vampire speed in the cars or something. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I thought that was really funny. It's like, awesome. Even, even as a kid, I was like, wait a minute. That seems weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't like, think why, of another movie that does that. Do yeah. That? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, what's, um, trying to think of a good question. You're still thinking about, like, your new Blade? I mean... Your new actor? It, it's, I'm telling you, it's been, I've been spinning around in my head, and, uh, do I have, does it have to be a new character? It has to be a new character other than Wesley Snipes. Right. <sighs> Give me another minute or two. Okay. Um, what, yeah, we talked a while back, I don't know how we got stuck on that, um, Whistler's death scene? Yeah. That's pretty strong stuff. Absolutely, yeah. I, my, that's really done well. My Blade comes back in and finds that that they had been followed at some point, and that Frost men had gotten into the gotten into where his compound, and they took they took the doctor, and they left a note for him, or they left, they left the VHS tape for him, right. for him yeah. to play. It said, "Hey, we're here with the girl," but VHS. underneath the bloody <laughs> sheet, sure enough, there's Whistler, and he's near death, and he says, "Give me your gun." put me out of my misery that's um, good shit and then he walks away and you don't actually hear a gunshot you just you see the the bloody hand of the gun drop down um, like like he shot himself and it's like funny that you don't hear the gunshot you know watching it now knowing that he's in the second one you think well how is he not dead he says I'm too far gone now yeah um <laughs> Every time I talk like Chris Robertson, I start talking like this. Like a man. Yeah, I'm too far gone now. <laughs> what? Like, it's such a good scene. Mm -hmm. and like, um, like the sheet. Like, it's completely, it's covered. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it scares the crap. It's like he knows what it's going to be in there, too. He very slowly oh, reads his joke. so, oh, man. Out. Papa? 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> my adopted Papa. Oh. Um, yeah, and then, like, they're cut. He's like, "Give me your gun." He's like, "No." <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. he has like a cotton ball, and he's like swabbing his neck. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, what's yeah. that gonna do? And it's like sticking to it. Yeah, there's one cotton ball. I almost feel like Bush oh, said that man. hurts more than it tells. <laughs> <Right>. You know. <laughs> but man, it's just, it's funny. Like the. This movie has some like really deep scenes between those two. Absolutely. But then it's always punctuated with stuff like the cotton ball. Yeah, it was or, a silly joke. I mean, yeah, it's trying to diffuse, right. trying to make it look like it's not so. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Like I, I would have liked it more if they had like gone the really serious route with it, like really showed that. Yeah. But then, but then somebody says you know something silly. At the <laughs> yeah. End. Yeah. Completely, does it over. Yeah. Um. The other thing that I really like about the Blade character and like how he's kind of a half head and half mm -hmm. is the serum. Yeah. And he gets it from like his soul brother. Like, yeah. Who's that guy? Yeah. 
Hmm. I don't know. It's like Marlon Wayne's discount. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, he just goes in that shop, whatever that shop is. Like yeah. a, and he's got like all sorts of essence of garlic. Yeah, and I wonder if he's just stuff. like kind of like a witch doctor almost, a new Ooh, age, you know, like cool. modern witch doctor. Kind of like that. And the serum was cool. Yeah. Um, also, another thing that was cool was, is what Dr. Jensen had found out about this EDTA stuff. Oh, right, yeah. And how, he, how he found that when, when she introduced it to vampire blood cells, that it would make them explode. So towards the end... They they put that into a weapon. They weaponize it, and it, and it really works. And it turns, in fact, Deacon Frost. We just shot up with all that serum. He just oh, turns right. into this this festering red lump of disgusting gooey. Yeah, gooey. and then blows up all over the place. But anyway, like yeah. When you put a pizza roll in the oven for too long. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but speaking of that EDTA, like, there's another one-liner, one smart-ass moment. Uh, he's like, look, and he looks in the thing, and she's like, I would stand back. It's, you know, reactive. Mm -hmm. And it blows up, and I don't know how he did it get in his eye. Yeah. But he's like, some cure. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, some I, didn't, cure. I didn't say it was a cure. Yeah. Maybe he could use it to blow up some vampire heads. Yeah. Oh, and he does blow up those, uh, the two. Yeah. Uh, they're like ninjas. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's like, um. I, this is horrible, but it reminds me of like the Dolph Lundgren Punisher, <laughs> where he's like in that weird dojo and the you know the paper walls. And yeah, stuff. he's fighting people in there, and then that's kind of like he, Blade just kind of fighting those dudes in like that small hallway and stuff. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I don't know why it reminds me of Dolph Lundgren Punisher. That's kind of weird. I don't know why. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it does. <clears throat> what what were those dudes' weapons? They had some cool stuff, didn't they? Yeah, they had some cool, they had some cool they stuff. Had, what, what? It wasn't like a baseball bat, but... I'm not quite sure what that was. No. You just watched it. I know, dude. So did you. <laughs> I remember. That's why I had you on here. God darn it. Um, but no, that's really cool. And then he has like a whole bunch of them in his sleeve, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Um, the, the pig sticker thing. Yes. Uh, when he's fighting Frost and he gets this shit stuck up on that ledge thing yeah serums yeah right and another he like throws a sword or something and frost He's like some nice, shot yeah nice shot yeah and then it does the clicky thing yeah it blows up which really that clicky thing was really turns out to be one of the most important <laughs> right? pieces of the clicky thing that's Otherwise, the technical term for it. yeah clicky thing comes out and then breaks the rock open here comes the serums boop, 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 oh and, and he catches it really cool then he has to at the end the very end he has to throw up the last serum in there just so he can ninja oh, kick right. it into steven dorf's yeah, forehead yeah, yeah. and that starts the whole process but it's like why didn't you just walk over there and stab him with it no he has to throw <laughs> it up in the air and ninja kick it with well, his giant like in, boots uh, yeah. Uh, another Jet Li movie I want to talk about is Kiss of the Dragon. Great movie. He kicks up the eight ball. Yeah. And does a flippy kick thing. Yeah. And hits him right in the head. Yeah. Like that's. I can see be, Jet Li doing that every day. That's got to be. Yeah, you know? He does that for warm ups <laughs> in the morning. Yeah. Huh. Um, but I wonder if that was almost like an homage to Blade. Yeah, it could be. Because it's like the same exact circumstance. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. Know. I just now kind of. Yeah, you just blew my mind. Together. Literally, just blew my mind. Like with the EDTA. Yeah. That's well, not pretty cool yeah. stuff. That's yeah, neat. But yeah, and then, um, you know, he gets it all stuck in him and he blows up and everything. And mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, he's this huge boiling pus monster. Mm -hmm. And what's Blade do? <laughs> he kind of puts his arm up a little bit and doesn't get a thing on him. That's awesome. Yes, I agree. Um, one other thing that I, I really want to talk about is that chamber that they put Blade in. Mm -hmm. And it comes together. And it has like those needles and shit in them. Yes. That's awesome. Yes, it I is. I don't neat. know why. But um, I know he's a like half vampire and stuff, but like when uh, Je uh, Karen Jensen pulls him out, I'm like, where are all the marks? Right. Yeah, he shouldn't have been able like, to regenerate he kinda, that. He kind of has some on his wrist still, but like they disappear completely. Especially when, if you go way back to the beginning, when, when Whistler tells tells Karen that that he will regenerate pretty much by by the next by tomorrow by, morning yeah, tomorrow his morning. wounds will be all but gone but it seemed like it was instantaneous there huh yeah um something i noticed i don't know if this is true at all so maybe you know but after because <clears throat> karen's like here have some of mine and he starts drinking her blood mm -hmm. and when he gets up he does Argh! yeah he's so jacked yes um does he have a does this stiffy i think he might 
Is that, or is it like, is it just his pants are in a weird position? I think he had a stiffy. I'm I think, because like, I feel like that's part of the vampire stigma. It's always like, erotic. It's, it's, it's erotic. Like erotic. Yeah, especially for him. The thing about how long it had been since he had actually had real blood. And then he bought drinks for dry. Um, so that's I'm sure he did have a stiffy. Jeez Louise, that was stiffy too. <laughs> Some major blue balls. Yeah, no, for oh sure. God. God dang. How many years? 30 years? <laughs> No, like that's always bothered me. Even since I was a kid, I was like, "Is that his wiener?" I kind of bothers me that you that you notice that. Well, like because he does that, and then it's like right under his belt buckle, <laughs> yeah. his huge like his huge something. Something. It's something. I don't know if it's his pants or his you know yeah. Black Panther. Don't let there, your imaginations do the work for you. <laughs> you be you be the it's judge. His, it's his big Black Panther. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Um. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. So um, before we get into trivia. And we pick, like, our new blades and stuff. Um, do you have any, like, closing thoughts? Anything else that you need to mention? Or, like, another favorite moment? It's open season on those suckers. <laughs> you already said that. Oh, no, nothing. Nothing? <laughs> nope. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, one thing I want to mention. I want to mention at the end, I'm mentioning this mainly because my 14-year-old son really got a kick out of it in the five minutes of the movie that he watched. But, but Steven Dorff does this. Does this jump at Blade, and it's, 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 yeah. But picture the legs clear up in the air too, right. like like a like a crouching tiger, hidden dragon type thing. All right, legs right. up in the air, and yeah. it shows him frozen with his with his ethnic hair, with the bangs parted, and the, the the fangs out, and it was just hilarious. And we paused it, and got a good laugh out of the deal. Um, this one. So that for Nathan, there you go, bud. Yeah, you yeah, kind of talked about the Stephen Dorff little pounce there. Was it his first time? Well, you only saw that part. Yeah, yeah. just a few minutes yeah. of it. Yeah, he stumbled That's in there. He'll have, to, he'll have to see it someday. For sure. For All sure. of it. Absolutely. Um, well, the one big thing uh, that I really want to mention is um, bullet time before the Matrix. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, when he's uh, when they meet in the park for the first time. <laughs> and he I, shoots those three bullets at yeah. him. Yeah. And it's all slow motion and it has the spirals and stuff? Yeah. Wow, this was 98. Yeah, for sure. The year before the Matrix. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah it's very Matrix, Matrix-esque, if you will. Well, yeah, he's got the black trench coat. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Matrix ripped it off. <laughs> I guess. Wow. Yeah, I just wanted to... And then I also think it's silly that, like... It's not silly, but it's kind of, like, awesome that Deacon shows up and he's, like, covered, like, pasty and, like, sunscreen and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I like that so much. <laughs> It's yeah, just yeah. like, duh. Yeah. Like, of course, like, he's in daylight, so duh. Yeah. Um, and then, just real quick, I saw, I don't know if this was like a meme or something, but it's funny, I just saw it today, and we're getting ready to talk about Blade, but it said, uh, uh, Blade is just a trilogy of bad guys throwing babies at him. It is! But all it, three movies! Yeah, oh, and like, the is. first one's the girl, the Asian girl that he throws mm -hmm. in, like, the hot dog stand. And then I had a picture like the third one. He throws the baby on the roof. Off the roof. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I don't know. That's I hilarious. They're really silly. That's what well, they, they, they know how to get to the blade soft spot, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is. All right. Well, uh, you want to jump into some trivia and Let's then we'll do, do our, uh, our, new, our new blade casting. Yeah. Let's do it. If for whatever reason... It'd be great. Marvel needs to get Wesley Snipes to come back. Yes. Because he's still... He's, I said he's 55. He looks better than us. Yeah, I'm 36, and I bet he's in way better shape <laughs> than I am. I'm 25, and I'm, he's looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> I look like him, but no. Right. Um, uh, so, yeah, right off the bat, um, David S. Goyer is the writer for this. Mm -hmm. David S. Goyer is the writer for, like, Dark Knight. And he, he did stuff with Man of Steel. Okay. Uh, stuff. So I've always liked him as a writer. Like, I always kind of knew him for, like, Dark Knight and stuff like that. And then going back and seeing stuff like Blade, I'm like, David S. Goyer, like, way back in 98? Yeah. Like, he's been around for a long time. I really like David S. Goyer. Um, so I just wanted to point that <laughs> Yeah, point that absolutely. Uh, Wesley Snipes became attached to the project because he was in discussions with Marvel Comics to play Black Panther. Wow. Perfect time to do this one. Yeah. I, I'm kind of upset that he wasn't in Black Panther. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of, I mean, they had everybody else. Right. You could have thrown some Wesley in there. A little bit That'd of Wesley. Never heard nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, some, you know, some people. Well. 
<laughs> um, this is really cool. Chris Christopherson's character Whistler was actually created for a Blade cameo in Spider-Man 94. Whoa! And he was liked so much by Marvel that he was adopted in the Marvel Universe. That's cool. Kind of, uh, so, 94. So that was about the same time as uh, Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. And so, like, Harley Quinn came from the cartoon. And so Whistler came from the cartoons, which okay. is, I don't know, I think that's really cool. That is cool. Um, when David S. Goyer first pitched the idea of doing a Blade movie, the executives of New Line felt there were only three actors who could possibly take on the role. Leslie Snipes, Denzel Washington, and Lawrence Fishburne. Ooh, Lawrence, and Lawrence Fishburne, that would have been pre-Matrix, too. Yeah. And Lawrence Fish, Fishburne is Morpheus, if you ask anybody that's ever seen a movie before who right. is Lawrence Fishburne, he's Morpheus. So that would have been, that would have changed it up completely. I, I don't... I don't I, think he'd be playing. And I couldn't see Denzel in the role either. He's no. more. I mean, Denzel's the tippy top of the A list. Don't get me wrong, but this is more of a movie that's. We need a, a B a B list actor for this movie. I think Denzel would have probably overacted it a little, a little much. Denzel, like every time I read stuff, they're like, "Oh, Denzel's almost cast." It's like it's always like I think another one was Spawn. Like he's, yeah, like, oh like, no, he's not that. He's American gangster. Yeah. He's, yes. He's, training uh, day. Training day. Like, yes. Those are his characters. And that's what he fucking crushes. Man on fire. Man, oh, that's oh, my favorite Denzel movie. my favorite movie. too. I fucking love that movie. Yep, me too. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. They, they always throw Denzel into that. And mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. And then um, we'll, we'll end it up with this. Because um, we've been doing a lot of Jet Li stuff. I talk about Jet Li a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm a big Jet Li fan. Uh, Jet Li was offered the part of Deacon Frost, but opted to do Lethal Weapon 4 instead. Oh, I'm, kind of, I'm glad he did, too, because I like him in Lethal Weapon 4. Yeah, and I like, I like I uh, like Steven Dorff in this. Yeah. I don't know. I love Steven Dorff. He's not in a lot of stuff, but he's just cool. What? He just seems uh, like he's a cool dude to hang right? out with. He was in, um, even those stupid commercials for the nicotine dump. Blue. Well, and then Blue e Right, e cigs right. Blue, blue e cigs That he, was when was he's cool He's a badass in those. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he maybe want to get one of those blue e cigs because he's Stephen Dorff. Stephen Dorff is smoking. Yeah, God, look cool. how cool he is smoking that. <laughs> be cool like yeah. him. Yeah, Stephen Dorff's really cool. I really yeah. like him. Um, there's a. I always get two, these two mixed up. It's like Cold Creek Manor, maybe. Have you ever heard of Cold Creek Manor? Yes. I think it's like Nicole Kidman. Yes. Maybe, and he's like a bad guy. Mm-hmm. And, Dennis Quaid is a good guy. Dennis Quaid is in Dennis it. Quaid is like married to Nicole Kidman and yep. in there and then Stephen Dorff's in there. Yep. And the first time I watched that I had no idea he was in there and the next thing I know he's like throwing snakes in their house. Yeah, it's a weird movie. Yeah, yeah, I, that is a weird movie but Stephen Dorff's like amazing. He's great. He's really good. Yep. Um, I had you pick like your second Wesley Snipes movie. What's your What's your other uh, Stephen Dorff movie? Oh God. You get, like, he's in everything. I know, I can't even but, think of one off the top of my head though. I really can't. God, give me some. Give me some for reference. I know. Cold Creek Manor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I could go on and on about Wesley Snipes movies, but right. I mean, because Stephen Dorff is like that guy who's in everything. I know. That just made me think like, of that, another Wesley Snipes movie that I love. What? The Fan. The Fan. With Robert De Niro, where he's the, Wesley Snipes is a baseball player for the Giants, and, and Robert De Niro is the over obsessive fan that ends up trying to kill him. You've never seen what? that movie. You've never seen that movie before. Oh, the, fan? Seen the fan. This guy. What year was that? I don't know. I don't know, but you're the is, one who's seen it. This is a project for you. This the is about fan. gotta be about the same time. Ninety six, maybe ninety really? seven. The fan. Yeah, and he gets obsessed with them, and they end up meeting each other, and then he goes after him. And De Niro does. Yeah, because he's like Ooh. an obsessive fan. He's like this dude. Yeah. What? Well, I've never even heard of that. Wow, I have it. I have to watch that. Yes. I have to do it on this. Yes. Um, a couple weeks ago, just for chips and giggles, um, have you ever heard of Red Scorpion? Uh-uh. Okay. I, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about a movie, and I brought up... I, I was trying to think of Dolph Lundgren. Mm-hmm. And instead of saying, like, oh, you know, Rocky IV yeah. or something, I said Red Scorpion. Um, so I'm just kind of... I've been doing, like, a, a poll to see who knows what the hell I'm talking about. Not me. It's like a, it's like a Commando or, like, a Rambo, but with Dolph Lundgren. Okay. Um, and I think we're going to be doing that. So if that's something you'd be interested in, we yeah. don't have to have you come on. Talk right about on. Yeah. Uh, Red Scorpion. <laughs> um, so we've had a little bit of time. Are you ready? I'm ready. ready. Okay, who you got? Well, and it's and it's kind of corny because of the timing of the Black Panther movie. But I had, I mean, the only one I could come up with would be Michael B. Jordan, who's playing back Black Panther, and that was yours, Mike. 
Michael B. Jordan to play it for a everything. Role. Yeah. I love Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, he's great. Love him. I, we were talking about Michael B. Jordan the other night because the wife and I were watching the Celebrity All Star Game basketball, and I thought to myself, well, I thought out loud, what would it be like <laughs> to, to be somebody who's famous who has to use his middle initial for the rest of his life because right? his name is Michael so Jordan? So famous already. Like a hundred years from now, everybody will still know who Michael Jordan was, and this guy's etching out his own corner in history. I mean, as far as being an actor and a celebrity and. He, He's great in everything he does, but he's always going to have to be Michael B. Jordan because right. there's a Michael Jordan that will always be Michael Jordan. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is a weird no, yeah, that's off amazing. topic thought. He yeah. has to, I mean, I'm sure he gets brought up a lot in like Google searches and stuff. Yeah. But like he has to like go that extra mile just to get the recognition. Yeah. That's be, so be his own Michael Jordan. And yeah. uh, Michael B. Jordan. Um, when they announced a Creed movie, mm -hmm. um, I was sitting in the room with my stepdad, and he said, oh, look, they're thinking about doing a Creed movie. Uh, it's going to be like uh, Apollo Sun. Mm -hmm. I was like, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Duh. And then sure enough, I'm yep. like, who else would it have been? And this is, I haven't seen Black Panther yet, so uh, maybe my opinion will change after that. Maybe he will be Black Panther, and then I'll have to find another, another, He's not another Black blade Panther. placement. I know. He's the bad guy. He's the bad guy? Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't even know. That's how much I know. See? Well, good. <laughs> uh, right. uh, what's his name? I think it's like Killmonger or something. I really thought he was Black Panther. Um, the uh, Chadwick Boseman. Oh, um, the, okay. The bad guy from Four Brothers. Yeah. 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 That's a cool movie. No, I want to talk about Four Brothers sometime. That'd be cool. Honor 2000's in that. Movie. Yeah. 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 Big Outcast fan. Everybody mm -hmm. is awesome in that movie. Yep. Um, so, fuck. Since he took Michael B, I will go with... I mean, Wesley's talking about doing it at 55. So, I mean, maybe. I always play this game with Kyle, like we try to do cast, and we have this rule no Tom Hardy and no Idris Elba. <laughs> Idris Elba would be perfect! Because everybody oh. casts them for everything. I love Idris Elba. But I'm gonna, he's not here, so fuck him. Um, I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break the rule. I'm gonna say Idris Elba. No, that's just great. And I almost feel bad for not because he's more older. Right. Um, another game would be Will Smith's kid. He, he Jaden. Yeah, Jaden probably be good. Maybe in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean a younger Blade or yeah. Right. I could see that. Yeah, for sure. I'd be down with that. And if it, if if we could, I mean, does, does Blade have to be? Does he have to be African American? Yeah. Well, then I can't I can't pick Christian Bale then. My number one. <laughs> what the fuck? Tippy top of the A list. Christian Bale. I had to make a note about so Christian annoying. Bale. I love him. We get in, I love you, Christian. Um, we work in the same place. We're both cooks. Cooks. And uh, so we live the life. But um, every time we talk about a film or a movie or anything, it always comes back down to Christian Bale for you. Yeah. And it almost like grinds my gears. <laughs> I'm like, shut up. I get it. You like Christian Bale. Love him. Love him. So crazy. Yeah. We had... Uh, um, on Facebook, it wasn't an argument, but like we we're going back and forth. I think I watched American Psycho. Mm -hmm. I was talking about Jared Leto is amazing, and all you did was heart Christian Bale. And then I'd say something like, "Oh, but dude, and this and this and this and yeah. thirty seconds smart," and you're like, "Heart Christian Bale." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, all you did. Hey, Patrick, is that an axe? <laughs> Why well, yes, Paul, it is. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that'd be good cast. Yeah. Okay, uh, real real quick, off the top of your head, just to close this out, um, Michael B. Jordan is your blade. Mm -hmm. Who's your Deacon Frost? <sighs> <laughs> or, Ryan or, Reynolds would be a great Deacon Frost. Uh, oh, I like that. Yeah, he'd be good for that. But he's yeah. already in Blade 3. But, right. I mean, he'd be good for that. I would like him in that. Ooh. Or Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Great. Yeah. Um, for... Uh, Deacon Frost. I would say someone like, um, I think Momoa. Okay. He's a little big and scary, but mm -hmm. I think he'd be, he's always a good bad guy. Like, now he's getting more hero roles and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I guess he started with, like, Conan and stuff, but, um, like, Bullet to the Head and some other stuff where he's, like, a gangster, or, like, a bad guy. Yeah. Like, okay. Game of Thrones, he's kind of a bad guy. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know, I think he'd, he'd be a great bad guy. I think you just need, you need somebody with that. Kind of, kind of almost like he almost cockiness. gives me like a like an Iceman type vibe, like right. a Val Kilmer type kinda, vibe. Yeah, like, like a, yeah. arrogant. Yeah, yeah. Kinda. I don't know why you got like this. Right. Like, like, Stephen Darby seems so cool, you know. Yeah, he's like, just, oh, look at me. <laughs> yeah. Look at me with my own button shirt, yeah. my crazy hair, yeah, my the cigarette. Hair here. Yeah. yeah, 
How the fuck did they do that part of hair? I don't thing? know. The hair was horrible. It was horrible. I, but like, I don't know. I kind of like it. It's uh, horrible, awesome, horrible, right. awesome. I, yeah. I, I kind of want that for me. Yeah. But like, and it's cool though. Like when he moves his head though, it like kind of waves. Like it's not like a gel or something. No, no, no. I don't know how the fuck they did that. <laughs> It's, it's like cloud. It's, it's like cr- it's like cloud stripes. There. It's glorious. Well, we're back to Final Fantasy VII again. Yeah. Yeah. Glorious. Okay. Um. Yeah. We'll we'll close it with that. Um. So shout out by like this. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, you know all that bullshit. We're on Stitcher, iTunes. I don't really need to keep telling you guys. Uh, check out the new website though. We're at PantheonNetwork.com. Have you checked that out yet? I have. Kinda, it's, yeah. it's awesome. Looking awesome. pretty good. Um, Go check it out, guys. Share it, like it, tweet it, love it. Got a, got a bunch of articles up on there, and we partnered with another podcast. We have uh, the guys at Comedy Bowl up there. and uh, Check out their content, too. They're pretty awesome. They're pretty... They're they're silly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm funnier, but uh, they're, they're pretty good. So go check that out, and uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Brian, for You're welcome. Thanks for having me. On. It's, it's fun. Uh, we'll have to uh, get you over more often. Yes. And maybe Kyle, too. Yeah, sometimes. I, so, uh, Maybe get off. I mean, we got room now. Yeah, you know, I got this this palace. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Peace out. Love you.